crypto and welcome again to the second part of hash functions uh, before we get into what we're going to cover in this video i want to recall again what a hash function is so a hash function is remember it's a function of a map that takes any data of any arbitrary size and makes it into a fixed size so for example here i have had the picture that i had exactly the same picture i had in the previous video which is about 5.1 megabytes and the hash function, what it will do is it transform it into something fixed. In this case, it will be 160 bits. So that was the definition of a hash function, something that we uh, defined in the last video. Now, in the last video, I also mentioned something that uh, the hash functions do not require a key. Now, uh, there are some that actually require a key. The, the thing is that most of the time when we talk about hash functions, we don't talk about the ones that have a key. So uh, we won't not talk about of, of those here in this uh, uh, topic of hash functions. Uh, so every time I say hash function, I refer that ones that ones that have no key or are unkey hash function. So the only input of the hash function will just be whatever the data you want to transform into a fixed size. All right, so. One of the things that we want to talk about is what are the desirable inputs and outputs of the hash function. So what do we want the input and the output to be? So there are uh, three basic things we have to consider. One is compression. Uh, the second one is easy of computation. And the third one is sensitive to all input bits. And I will go over each one of them uh, in this video. So let's start with Compression. So what is compression is uh, is actually something that we already talked about. You take an input of arbitrary finite bit or size and the output is a fixed bit length. So just to go back to the examples we did in the previous video. So remember we had this uh, a string of characters pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs, which is about 312 bits. If I take a particular hash function, so that will give me 160 bits. And this particular hash function is going to transform everything into 160 bits. So is you can think about that as the compression. So it compresses all that 312 bits into 160 bits. In a similar way, with the example of the picture, which is uh, about 5 megabytes, I apply exactly the same hash function and I will get exactly the 160 bits. So that's the compression. So something that actually is just a part of the definition of the hash function. So that's that part, compression. Now, one thing that we that is very common in hash function is that the outputs or the fixed size are usually between 128 to 512 bits. So all the hash functions that we will talk about here will have that range. That will be the output, the size of the output for the particular hash function. And of course, there are lots of hash functions and uh, depending on the hash function, you will have a certain kind of uh, output. Like, for example, some of the hash functions will have uh, 128 bits output, some others will have 160 and so on. So it just depends on whatever the hash function it is. So those are the common values for the output. Now, the second part is easy of computation. So what it says here, if you take an arbitrary input, call it X, the output h of x, which is applied the hash function to that input, is computationally feasible. Um, so there's not much I have to talk about. This computationally feasible, uh, it has a very formal definition, but for us, for the moment, we're going to talk about computationally feasible is, is that you can actually compute it in a reasonable amount of time. So that hash function should be let's say, easy to compute. So if you give it any input, it doesn't matter how big or small the input is, the output or applying the hash function to that input should be uh, easy to compute. So it should not take too much time. Now, this is also very important and is uh, sensitive to all input bits. So what that means is the following thing. If I change a little bit the input x, just by, maybe by one bit or one byte, that will produce a major change in the output of the hash function. Let me explain that with an example. So let's say I have here this uh, a string of characters and which call that X, 
So he has so the student character is he has three different types of guns. Now, if I use a particular hash function, I will get that output that you see there. Now let's consider something that is very similar to that string of characters, which is the one I'm going to show you now. He has three different types of gums. Now, if you notice uh, the two different uh, string of characters, they differ by only one letter. So if we think about this letter represented as, as a byte, so in basically what we are saying is that these two strings just differ by one byte. Now, the result of the hash function should be different because it has to be sensitive to all input bits. So if I apply the hash function, as you can see there, the output is actually completely different to the output of the first uh, string of characters. So just a little change in just one letter, just eight bytes, or sorry, one byte, it will give you a completely different output. And that's one of the things that you want in a hash function. Now that's for basically security reasons. And we'll go into more details on why we want all these kinds of things in the hash function. So that's the input output behavior we want. So we want three things that the ones we went over uh, already here. Now there are also some security requirements of hash functions. Now remember the ones that we're talking about here, they do not have keys. So there is mo there must be some way to secure the hash function and secure in some sense that I'm going to talk about uh, in right now. So the first thing is called the pre-image resistance or one-wayness, something that we actually talked about in this course already. That's the one-way functions, but we'll go over it uh, this anyway. We'll repeat what that definition is. The second part is the second security requirement is that it's called second pre-image resistance or it's also called weak collision resistance. And the third security requirement is that you have collision resistance. In this case, is also called the strong collision resistance. So let's go over each one of them. So what is the pre-image resistance? It is basically what it says is that a hash function should be a one-way function. Um, we talked about one-way functions in this class already. Uh, that was an important part of uh, cryptography. So base, let's recall what that actually is. So what that is, is I, if I give you an output that is usually between 128 and 512 bits, it must be computationally infeasible to find an input that maps to that output. So that's basically the definition of one-way function that is really difficult to invert uh, the function. Basically, that's what the one-way function means. So an example here could be something like this. Suppose I give you an output, which is uh, that hexadecimal number that you see there. And then, so one-way function h, which is the hash function, should be a one-way function, means that it, if you know what the hash function does, so you have actually the output, you know what the hash function does in general, so the general setup of the hash function, it will be really difficult to find an input that maps to that uh, output, given that you already know that hash function. So now remember that this is also, this is exactly the same definition we had for one-way function. So it's, it's basically the same. Um, so that's what I said there. So it's computationally infeasible. Okay, so we have uh, two other requirements, the second pre-image resistance and the collision resistance. Now, if you notice here, the word collision is there. So I think it uh, I want to explain first what a collision is before I go into number two and three. So let's just go over what a collision means in a hash function. So what is a collision in a hash function? In general, what is a collision in any function? So we'll talk about hash functions in particular here. Now, suppose we have a hash function that uh, takes any input and, and transforms that into 160 bits. Now, the hash function should be able to manage or to have inputs of any size. So if I think about the universe of all data sizes, so you have files of, for example, one megabyte, 20 megabytes, one gigabyte, and you have a data, uh, files with data sizes that are longer than that, smaller than that. Imagine all those kinds of files. So there is a lot of them, actually, tons and tons of them. 
Now, when the hash function does, and in this particular case, we want the hash function to produce 160 bits. So it's going to take all those files that you see on the left in the universe of data sizes, and it's going to map that into 160 bits. So the output is going to be 160 bits. So how many of those outputs are there? So how many possible 160 bits are there? is 2 to the 160. If you think about it, you have 160 positions and each position could be a 0 or a 1. So there's a possibility there's a two possibilities for one position. That's why you get 2 to the 160. Now, 2 to the 160 is of course a really large number. But the problem here is that the number of elements in your data sizes in the inputs is a lot larger than that. So if you think about only the files that have one megabyte, there are a lot, a lot more files that have one megabyte in size than that there are uh, 160 bits uh, strings of that size. So because that is the, the, the difference between the input and the output, the number of inputs is a lot bigger than the number of outputs, there must be at least two distant files that have the same hash. So for example, I have these two files here, the white file and the red file, which could be a text file or a picture or whatever you want. So there must be two files that will have, uh, if I play h, whatever my uh, function h here, the hash function uh, gives me 160 bits and this other file will have exactly the same output. So two inputs, two distinct inputs will have exactly the same output, the same 160 bit output. That's what is called a collision. So a collision of a hash function. Now, the problem is it doesn't matter how much you try, collisions and hash functions cannot be avoided. And the reason for that is because the number of inputs is a lot larger than the number of output because that's the design of the hash function. You want the output to be a fixed size, which is a small size. Now you can think about collision in the following way. So let's think about it this way. So suppose you have the set of all people, uh, whether they're, uh, let's say, alive people in the world. So let's say we have example here, Peter, John, Lisa, and Martha, and that's going to be your inputs. Now the output will be the age of people. Of course, there are more people than possible ages, of course. So ages, if we think about of the standards to, of today, so you can have between zero, maybe between zero and 130 maximum be very difficult to find someone who is as old as 130 but let's suppose it is like that so the number of people is of course a lot larger than the numbers between 0 and 130 so there's bound to be collisions if you think about it of course that always happens so you always have people who have for example in this particular case Peter and Lisa will have for example 21 are 21 years old and uh, John and Martha could have 18. So that is a collision. And the reason you have a collision is because the number of people is a lot larger than the possible ages of people. So that's why the hash functions always will have a collision, no matter how you try to define it, as long as your output size is uh, smaller than the number of uh, elements in your input uh, set. So you always have collisions. So remember, these are the security requirements. So we talked about number one, which is uh, one witness, and the two and three that have that work collision. So let's just go over two and three now. So two, which is the second pre-image resistance, but what we also call weak collision resistance. So what is that? So suppose I suppose somebody gives or, or an attacker has an input, uh, given an input and an output. And of course, the attacker also will have the information about what the hash function does. So the second pre-image resistance says that because we already know that uh, these things have collisions, then there must be another uh, input, let's call it X prime, that will map to the output. Now, the second pre-image resistance says that finding that input is computationally infeasible. Okay, let me explain that with a picture. So let's say you are given this information here that I have uh, here in the slide. So I have the output, so I know the output. I also know the hash function or what the hash function does. Uh, 
and I also know the input. So I know the file in red goes to the output that you see there in binary. Now, because all hash functions have collisions, I know there is another file that maps into that one. So, and that's okay. The second parameter resistance says that the design of the hash function, it should be such that if finding that other file, call it X prime, will be really difficult or will be computationally infeasible to find that other file. So that is the second pre-image resistance. Now, all the secu security requirements I'm talking about, they have implications in on the way that the hash functions are used. So we talk about why hash functions have this kind of security requirements later. So not in this video, in another video, I'll explain why this, this is important to have. So that's the second pre-image resistance. Now, the third requirement, the third security requirement is collision resistant or strong collision resistance. In this case, what you are given is the following thing. You have the output, and so it will be computationally infeasible to find two distinct inputs that go to the same output. Remember, this is talking about, again, collisions. In this case, you are given less information than in number two. So in number two, you have an input, output, and the hash function. In this case, you only have the piece of information that you have here is only the output and of course the hash function. So let's talk about that. So suppose somebody gives you an output, which is uh, that binary number that you see there. Uh, and you also have the information about the hash function, should you know what the hash function does. So it will be computationally infeasible to find two distinct inputs that go exactly into that output. So it would be, I cannot find X and X prime to go that go exactly into that into that output. So that will be the third security requirement of a hash function. Now, in this couple of videos, we talk uh, very general about what hash functions are, what are the requirements in terms of input output, also in terms of the security of the hash functions. Now, so far, we haven't seen any definition, actually formal definition, or exact definition of some hash functions, how they work, how they are defined, how they act on a specific input. But we will see those. Uh, we want to talk about these general uh, aspects first because we, this is also very important. So in the next video, I'll talk about why we ask all of these uh, requirements for hash function. And later, we'll actually talk about a specific hash functions, how they act on a specific input. So that's all I have to say for this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.